For the fourth straight day, violence engulfed downtown Cairo as angry protesters battled with the police in front of the despised Interior Ministry, a symbol of repression during the 30-year dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak. The Interior Ministry is blamed for being complicit in a bloody riot at a soccer match in the city of Port Said on Wednesday that left 74 people dead. Government security forces have been uncharacteristically restrained at times, but they have been unable to dissuade the protesters from pushing forward toward the ministry, igniting the clashes. When the police could not stop them, Groups of civilians, among them many Islamists, managed to establish a ceasefire. <laughs> On Saturday morning, they formed human chains in between police and protesters and instructed them to end the standoff with the police and return to Tahrir Square. But many young protesters refused to leave. <laughs> Throughout the day, the mostly middle-aged men tried to placate the younger, fiery crowd. The Muslim Brotherhood was a major force in the uprising against Mubarak last January. But they and other Islamist groups have criticized recent protests, instead choosing to participate in elections organized by the ruling military council. While the Muslim Brotherhood has blamed the government for the soccer massacre, they have not endorsed the protests, nor has the other major Islamist group, the Salafis. <laughs> But the Islamists could not convince the protesters. A rowdy group of young men charged toward the ceasefire line. They pelted rocks at the police while Islamists implored them to calm down. Confrontation was avoided, but the rage on the streets could not be dampened. The protesters wouldn't budge, and when thousands more arrived in the afternoon, the civilian peacemakers could no longer stop them. They start throwing rocks and remove the police barricades. And then chaos erupts. The truce is broken. The police force responds with a salvo of tear gas. Some shoot in the air. Others fire directly at the protesters. The short-lived calm is shattered, and downtown Cairo once again morphs into a war zone. The city's eerily empty streets are sown with rubble, and the air is choked with tear gas. The barrage of tear gas, rubber bullets, and birdshot fired by security forces is relentless. As quickly as the police fire the tear gas, it's hurled back at them. The protesters remain defiant. The lone flag in memory of slain activist Mina Danielle never stops waving through the toxic mist. Danielle was shot in the head during the Masbiro massacre last October, when army soldiers killed nearly 30 people outside the government building. Since then, his relatives have fearlessly raised his flag at protests and the front lines of the street battles. Protesters try to set up barricades out of scraps of metal. 
but the armored police vehicles, notorious for running people over, advanced too quickly, firing tear gas at the protesters. Ostensibly a non-lethal weapon, tear gas used by the Egyptian police has had deadly consequences. After numerous protesters were asphyxiated by tear gas last November, the newly installed interior minister announced during his inauguration that tear gas would not be used against the people again. But that promise would soon be broken. The gas canisters raining down on the people are the same as those used before and after the revolution one year ago. Manufactured in the state of Pennsylvania and exported to Egypt with the approval of the U.S. government. <laughs> Police detain and beat protesters who had taken shelter in the entryway to a building. Others attempt to rescue them, but only one manages to escape. On the streets heading away from the interior ministry, motorcycles carrying the wounded push through the heavy crowns of people ending their journey at waiting ambulances. The health ministry reports a dozen people have been killed and over 2,000 injured since Thursday night. Cities all over Egypt have joined the latest revolt. Some of the fiercest clashes took place in the seaport city of Suez. Police forces use live ammunition along with tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse protesters who converged on police stations around the city. Doctors in Suez report at least one protester was killed by live rounds, while many others are gravely injured from gunshot wounds. The death toll in Suez rose to seven by Sunday. In Cairo on Mohammed Mahmoud Street, although the rock-throwing protesters are injured one after the other, reinforcements keep the battle against the police alive. Although the streets leading to the Ministry of Interior are being bombarded with tear gas, you're seeing young people heading straight toward the front line, some of them with medical masks, not gas masks. They're determined to continue battling police forces until they're able to get as far as the Ministry of Interior. Some of the chanting you're also hearing in this environment is different from before, where they once said the people demand the popular removal of the field marshal. Now they're calling for his execution. Even with the danger the clashes pose, some Egyptians bring their children. Lots of the people fighting here are young. More than half the Egyptian population is under the age of 25. <laughs> Women were also near the front lines, tending to the men, serving as medics and at times supplying the rocks. Uprisings in November and December left dozens dead and thousands injured. The ruling military council managed to quell the protests, erecting enormous walls to stop street clashes and organizing parliamentary elections. But this latest rebellion has had a new dimension, as countless diehard fans of Egypt's most popular soccer team have joined in full force with the activists. Frustration and anger have steadily mounted in the years since the revolution. For many Egyptians, the soccer massacre was the last straw. They say nothing has changed despite the arrests of Mubarak and his notorious interior minister, Habib al-Adli. Protesters put little faith in the transition to civilian rule overseen by the military council and a newly elected parliament dominated by the Muslim Brotherhood and Salafi parties. The protesters are calling for an immediate end to military rule and a complete overhaul of the government. 
كلهم ولادنا ده مصدر التسول ولسه هنرجع تاني مش هنسيب المجلس العسكري لازم يسلم على ميداليه يا جماعه ميداليه ميداليه ما بنخاف Clashes continue to rage on Sunday, and workers and students across the country have called for a general strike on February 11th, the anniversary of Mubarak's ouster in support of the people's latest revolts against military rule. Jahan Hafiz in Cairo, Egypt.